are now listening to you are now listening to the wrong agenda podcast the wrong agenda podcast with just Dell. yo 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 this your boy og lee brought to you by valiant world media group this is the wrong agenda podcast How you doing, everybody? And welcome to the Wrong Agenda Podcast. I, of course, am your host, Just Dale. I got my co-host with me, OG Lee. Sir, we here. And today we got Lavelle Adams Gray, who is yo, yo, yo. multi-talented. I don't want to say he's an actor because that's not all he is, but you'll get to find out today. How you doing? I'm doing very well, King. How are you, man? All right. Thank you for uh, taking the time out and uh, sitting with us today. Thank you. It's it's a it's a been a it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here today, man. Um, I'm looking forward to to doing this thing with you, man. I appreciate it. All right. Just first and foremost, I just want to say I'm glad everyone is healthy right now, and we're able to do this. So let's Thank be God. thankful. Exactly. Let's be thankful that we can make this happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. With that being said, let's get into it. Let's start with where are you from. I'm from Toronto. Well, more specifically, uh, um, I'm from Brampton, mm-hmm. but um, born and raised in Toronto, um, Ontario, Canada, all that. Um, <laughs> and uh, I live in New York now. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, that's okay. cool. cool. That's cool. Yeah. So how you how you like in New York? Well, I mean, kind of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> but, but me personally, I love it. I love it. I, I love. Um, everything about it we're saying we're in brooklyn oh nice okay so it's like it's everything's it's right nice. there. everything is right there mm-hmm. can't access any of it really <laughs> shouldn't access any of it yeah. but um it's it's just really nice it's like a a different it's like it feels kind of like toronto but has its own you know what i mean and it's it's beautiful every day i get to wake up and and really like see this place and you know i grew up watching Spike Lee films, all that kind of stuff. So actually seeing the, this backdrop in uh-huh. person, walking by these locations and all that kind of stuff is it's pretty oh, incredible. So, uh, how did you get into acting? How did, how did you start acting? Oh, well, when I was a kid, um, being in Toronto, there aren't a lot of like actors that come from there. Um, so I didn't have a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say guidance, but I didn't have a lot of like people to look at. And I was like, oh, that's, that's how you do it. That's like follow that know that that um trajectory so um i i like, always watch will smith and mm-hmm. i was like that's do that <laughs> <laughs> do that um, <laughs> and uh i used to want to i want to go to university because uh, we have this uh, university called uh york york university and it has uh it's a like, really prestigious like acting program and acting mm-hmm. school and all that kind of stuff um and in high school, I just, my head was like, I don't know how to break into the acting world. So logically, I was like, what do you do when you want to go for a job that you really want to do? You go to school for it. So right. I was like, all right, well, go to university. Not like, the, the advice I was getting was like, you know, don't get an agent and you know, all kind of stuff. So they like, oh, all right, <laughs> do, you know, and you do what you always done, get what you always got kind of thing. So for me, I was like, let me just kind of branch out and do what I know, which is just go to school for it. Um, and I applied to York, but I had also taken this co-op and uh, I didn't know that co-op tailored you for college. Mm-hmm. So it didn't count towards university. Right. Um, and I had everything I had was geared towards university. Like all my grade, all my classes were university classes and grades and all that kind of stuff. So I was from like yeah. grade nine to 11, uh, 12. And I was like, I'm good. I'm going to university straight. First one in my family do that. And then I applied and I got bounced back letters saying, I don't have enough credits. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so, so, so I was mad, but I, yeah. I applied for this, this uh, acting program in this college that I heard about when I was a kid that I actually really wanted to go to. But the idea okay. of university was so in my mind. By mm-hmm. the time I was like, that you were focused. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so I applied to this program, I auditioned. The audition was amazing. Um, ended up being on the wait list and like I got bumped up on the wait list. And uh, when I got in, I was at work when I found out, like I was working at this factory over the summer with my friends. 
Mm-hmm. And when I found out I got in, what the hell did I do? I think I like, I was we were in the lunchroom and I like just went crazy in the lunchroom, like ran around <laughs> and stuff. And like, it's me and my homies and yeah. like a bunch of older people, you know what I mean? A bunch of older yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. like, What's going on with this book? <laughs> That's kind of like what the like early beginnings of how I started and then just went to school for it. And after the two years, um, they really helped me find an agent and get a real going, all that kind of stuff. But, nice. um, yeah, that's like the long and short of how I like, really got started. Just went to school for it and continued okay. to take classes after that. So did you did you ever do like um stage on stage work and stuff like absolutely. that? Or just, uh, just absolutely. Yep. Um, when I was in high school, I went to this high school specifically because they um, put on three different plays a year. Mm-hmm. They weren't considered an, uh, an, an art school, but there was this art school in the city that put on one a year. So the logic <laughs> is that like you go to the one that doesn't do that, but um, mm-hmm. it was like three, you get three opportunities to do a play. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so I, I took that and um, I did, you can't take it with you. And then um, my, I, my drama teacher, he, started, he also like directed these out extracurricular school plays. And he, um, he uh, wrote a couple of plays. So one of the characters I did was named, cause he knew how much I loved Will Smith that my character was named uh-huh. Mythe. <laughs> oh, that's, that's subtle. <laughs> so, so, so I was like, I'm always like indebted to him for that and just like kind of really building me up. He, he was a guy who really built me up. I, I, like, I always look back on, I mean, he's still around and he's doing really well. But um, I, when I look back on like part of my path, having someone in my corner that really like, oh, you want to do this? And I can see that you're talented in doing it. So I'm going to encourage as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Like those kinds of people in your life are, you know, invaluable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, hey, thanks to him, because. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. what was your first uh, like on-screen role, and how did you get that? It's so funny you asked that question because me and my fiance were just watching this. The first thing I did, <laughs> like, it was um, there was a show called The Next Step, which is like this dance kind of. Uh, I, I was I was doing show? I was doing some research on you and it, it definitely <laughs> came out. <laughs> <laughs> so so there was an after show for it and that's that that was the first on screen stuff I, I I'd ever done. Okay. Um, outside of like college like little mm-hmm. like shorts and stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, I was terrified, <laughs> right? And we had to shoot everything, like you know, they're pretty much like it's like the view or you know what I mean. So you're sitting there talking to your people about what's going on. Uh, what happened in the show you just watched so where we have to like pretty much spitball the entire time wow i was given my own specific session which was like giving giving the audience their like question for the episode like do you think this thing will happen or do you think this person will ask you know so and so yeah so every time that I, (laughs) i had to break away from conversation look directly at the camera and say do you think this thing will happen? And <laughs> I tell you, so if you could hear the mic, <laughs> if you could hear the mic that was on my lapel, you would hear my heart going. <laughs> wow. As soon as that part, because they, they would kind of go off camera and be like, okay, it's your turn in three, two. So we're sitting there having this conversation. And I got to like break away kind of thing and be like, yeah, that's all great, guys. Thank you. And so, do you think? And this, it was like at least two or three occasions where I, I always messed up that either the transition or the because I I had to kind of like I didn't have a teleprompter, so, yeah. you, so I it would have to memorize. I had to memorize a question. Oh, that's man. a nightmare. And, <laughs> and kind of just like glance at it as we're talking and all, and then just kind of boom, do it. And if I didn't, word for word, it had to be word for word. And if I didn't get it right exactly word for word, we had to stop and do it again and stop and do it again. <laughs> After a while, I'm just like getting in my head and like freaking out. You know what I mean? All kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, definitely. It, it, internally, it's, um, it's chaos. Maybe to the friends beside me, it was my, maybe like, oh, he's just kind of doing it over and over again. But I swear to God, the camera picked up everything. And I looked like I was like, taking a dump in my pants. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> that's great. That, yeah. that, I can imagine that. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm secretly freaking out here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, ever watch it back, you can tell. Like, I always, like, hold on tight and cringe for those moments. Man. So how did you feel when your first project was released? And, you know, what do you think about it? You always thought it would be a success or like your uh, first project you did? I feel like every time an actor does something, they feel like it's going to be successful. Okay, um, good, there's, good always, there's always a lot of factors behind, um, you know, there's always a lot of things that have to go on in order for a project to even come out or to be greenlit. Oh, yeah. Place. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying exactly, right? Yeah. So yeah. once yeah. it does get it, it's in the process of getting made, and like, oh, I'm doing ADR now. Oh, nice. That means that we're really gonna, you know, <laughs> it's, what I mean? this it's is happening. Really like, it's getting past all of this. <laughs> oh, it's really people are really gonna see this soon. Okay, yeah, I get it. You know and then once once it comes out, it does what it does. So for me, like when when I did the next step after show, I, we already kind of knew that the after show was gonna be like this nice kind of adage onto the show. But yeah. we also really knew we had a feeling like that, that the next step was going to do really well, um, and when it it, it it did do really well, um, and it started traveling, you know, to the UK and all that kind of stuff, and these these guys toured. But they also decided that season one was good for the after show. They didn't really need to do it again, mm -hmm. um, you know, because of budgeting and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, nah. once I'm really good with like once I do a project, once I do something, yeah. I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. good. I don't need to. You know what I mean? Like yeah. mentally, I'm like, I'm done with this part, like ne next chapter and let's move on, let's move forward. I'm always like excited to do that. So once we really didn't, you know, hear anything about a season two for the after show and all that stuff, I'm like, dope, what's the next audition? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing next? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so I know you said, you know, Will Smith, you, you're a big fan of Will Smith and, and stuff big. like that. Who, who was some of your other inspirations? Like, who else inspired you? Denzel. All day, every day. Mm -hmm. Denzel. Denzel. Definitely. 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 Can't go wrong Definitely. with Denzel. <laughs> I can quote I can quote movies. I can you know what I mean? I, I we just watched Mo Better Blues again the other day. That's probably the, the the second time I've seen it now. And like I, I That's classic. Super <laughs> super underrated though. Like because like, I, I, I I've been branching from watching Denzel's work to like let me just watch some spike stuff. Because mm -hmm. you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's super, super underrated film. Like it took I, I did um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom on stage a couple of years ago, like I guess technically last year, but a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and I played Levy and the character of Levy is the trumpet player. And he's like really, you know, wants to do his own thing and make his own band and do all these kinds of things that it really clashes with mm -hmm. what Ma wants and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, I watched Mo Better Blues in preparation for that. And oh, seeing nice. so many parallels between these two stories. I look at like Mo Better Blues is like the spiritual sequel, uh -huh. to, you know what I mean? To, right. to the story. Cause like, it's kind of like, oh, he did get his own band and now he's like, his own <laughs> yeah, band. I know what sax the player. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now you have a sax player coming. It, it's just really such an amazing film to me. Such an amazing film. Um, so yeah, Denzel, uh, love Jamie Foxx. Jamie oh, Foxx is my Jamie dude. Jamie Foxx has love so much talent. Jamie. Fox. So much talent. So much. Yo, so much. So yeah. much talent. <laughs> and it's casual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His talent is casual. You just be like, yeah, do this. And you'd be like, do it. And you just do it for fun. Like, and have so much, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I tell yeah. you, if I'd never seen Jamie Foxx act a day in my life and I just heard his music, I would have no problem saying, oh, he's a, he's a singer. That's just yeah. it. That's what he yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, Jamie, who else? Uh, Al Pacino. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. Pacino is a big one. Just watched and Justice for All again. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, oh, Django is my favorite movie of all time, which is yep. like mm. one might be surprised. That's some good. Nah, good that was a good movie though. It's yeah. an incredible movie, like incredible, like and just nice to be able to see it in that way and like kind of through a t Tarantino lens where you're not just like, okay, oh, this is slavery and here we're gonna be doing like you want you to get a slavery <laughs> film, you know what we're gonna be talking about, you know what we're gonna right. be yeah. You know what I mean? So to have it in this kind of context through this Tarantino lens, oh, just Tarantino a nice is, kind of... He's, he's uh, a whole nother l level of just... I love his movies. I'm a fan, oh, big yeah. fan of his. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we could talk about that. We could talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched The Hateful Eight 
Mm-hmm. And they came out with like a special extended cut on Netflix at some point, and it's just like it just got better and better. Like everything, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> See, that's it's funny because I remember watching Hateful Eight. I watched it in theaters, and and seeing like uh, Jennifer Jason Lee get like everything happened to her, uh-huh. and you know what I mean. Like just yeah. every like every every single thing. Like this woman was like bloodied and bruised and this and just licking blood off her face by the end of it she was just like i'm good like this you know what I mean? <laughs> i'm just in it now it's uh yeah it was um that's that's uh that's the one that sticks with you yeah there's that's it's up there <laughs> all right so um through doing looking through your imdb of course mm-hmm. they said that you speak a few languages is that really true or- yeah, <laughs> I, I, think, I think so. I think so. <laughs> I mean, I always like so. Okay, when I, you know, our our second language in Canada is French. Right. So, yeah. So um, uh, we just learned that in school, and then um, mm-hmm. I also learned Italian. But you know, like, uh, it's so long ago. Like, it's just, like it's just you, in you there, learned like, it, but so, you're oh, not confident yeah. in it. That that's where it is. Okay, uh, I get I it. Not so, confident. Oh, but, but what if they wanted you to play one of those type of roles? You think you could do it? I hop into it. I I, I will like I do. I can do research like I'm, like anybody. You know. What All mean? right, so that's I, an I, actor. I, 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 can, I can lock in. I can lock in because especially because I have the 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 background and the foundation. Yeah. So you can yeah, always go back yeah. to foundation. It's like picking up the trombone or something like that for me. Like I, I haven't played trombone since I was in what grade nine, but I could do it again if you asked me to. Like I could pick it up, know what I'm doing. Get mm-hmm. the, get it back yeah, to yeah. my body. So same thing for Italian, French. I don't know. <laughs> Italian, I can think of Italian again because my my grandmother's Maltese. Oh, okay. And the Maltese language is like a mixture of Italian, right. and Arabic, and a different uh, other different influence. This is an interesting area. I just yeah. how's the, how do have you ever been there? Yeah, I, I was actually really? there last summer. Yeah. Oh wow! What is that like? It is like so. If you ever do a Europe trip, for mm-hmm. both of you. Mm-hmm. You have to hit Malta because people always skip it because it's a small little island. Yeah, it's a little right island now. somewhere. I'm, I never really, you know. I'm definitely about to write that down. And <laughs> yeah. I need it's to. So beautiful. The seafood is so good. They have like octopus. Oh yeah. They have, like you know, what I mean, like it's all it's Mediterranean island, so it's hot yeah. in the summertime, like stupid hot. Like, like I'm part Jamaican and I went to Jamaica the same time the year before, like in August. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's hot. Me and the sun got some beef, but I'm okay. <laughs> if, I stay, if I stay in the shade, I'm all right. Go into Malta. It's hot. Like, I've really? never hot, experienced hot. Anything, <laughs> different type of hot. Just, like, different type of hot. Like, and uh, you could hide from the sun all you want, but you're still hot. Still. It's not, mm-hmm. but it's not like a humid kind of hot. It's just like mm-hmm. the, the, the earth. It's a desert, yeah. technically. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, they have that like, cactus, it, cacti, and all that kind of, And they got like, the first time I ever saw the cactus fruit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little small. Um, yeah. I never saw that before. So they like drink it, like make it into like an alcoholic beverage. And all oh, wow. It's really dope. Um, and they have this, um, when you go, so you're going to go now. Yes. Yeah, I'm, um, defi- I'm definitely going to go. Listen, I, I, <laughs> after everything that's going on now, I'm trying to go everywhere yeah, I can yeah. as soon as yes. I can. <laughs> yes. Um, they got this thing called um, Pastizzi. And um, or pastits, I guess, is the singular singular form. Yeah. Um, and it's like this pastry filled with like either ricotta cheese or like peas, or like you can do chicken, you can do anchovies and stuff. Really? But the traditional one is ricotta cheese. It is you. It's so good. It is so good that you're like you're not really gonna want to eat anything else because you're gonna be filled up, filled up with everything. <laughs> it's like what they eat for breakfast. Um, but it is so good and like. The, the cities, what I really like about it, I love ancient architecture. And some of yeah. the oldest architecture on the planet is in Malta. Mm, that's dope. So like that's you can predate it. It's like, that. it goes way back and, um, to this, this, this place called Hajar Im, where they have some of these old like ruins that they kind of had to restore a little bit because it was mm-hmm. falling apart. But um, it's like some of the oldest, like, like what's, what's the carbon dated rock, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> is, is on... Malta, and it's like you can you can drive around the island, like not drive, but like on a boat, right? And sail yeah. around the island, and you can just see the island. Like it's just incredible. Like it's so wow. small, 
and so diverse and just rich yeah. and full of everything it hasn't no oh, man i can't wait to go back my grandmother's going back like as soon as she gets out of this quarantine she's gone <laughs> i don't blame her i don't blame her either <laughs> man, all right man. um let's move on to seeing you on slasher mm -hmm. netflix um, how did that come about? Were you uh, into a fan of that type of genre or did it just, how, that's how was that? <laughs> that's a funny question. I can't stand horror things. I, I'm terrified of horror things. I, okay, I just... good. That's good to hear because I'm not a big horror fan. <laughs> oh, okay, but growing good. up, I have older brothers, so I was kind of scared into watching horror, but yeah, then when I got old enough to make my own choices, I said, no, I'm good. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> horror is not the same anymore anyway. It's not the same as, so? it, you, as it used to be. No, it was way scarier back then. Maybe because we were younger. I don't know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> like, like Evil Dead and, and the original uh, Friday the 13th scared the mess out of me. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. Candyman. I couldn't watch. See, Candyman is something I still couldn't watch to this day. That's something that's terrifying to this day. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you remember he killed a little boy in the bathroom like while he was still peeing? Like, what are you yeah. doing? Like, that's, that's, a, that's a villain villain. Like, you know what you're doing, <laughs> Making bees come out of your mouth. Come on. Oh yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. He was a um, savage. Mm -mm. Yeah. So how did how did that come about? How did that come into your life? Is I actually auditioned the same day I auditioned for that part. I auditioned for a play, and it was I, I loved the content of the play. And I, in my mind, I was like, I'm good with this play. Like, mm -hmm. let me just go audition for this and use my whole body for this work. And um, really, I like I was so committed, and everything was just like. I was ready to do this part. It wasn't even just like auditioning for the role. I was like, I'm here to do this part. Like you're gonna give me the role today mm -hmm. and I'm gonna rehearse tomorrow, like, let's do it. And um, I auditioned for the part, loved it, had a great time, left. And then I had audition for the for Slasher. So I was already going in like ready, confident. Yeah, you was ready, yeah. And I already had something that I'm like, I feel good about my work today already. So I don't, I don't, I'm not scared. I'm not like, you know what I mean? I can just be there and breathe and listen and just do this thing. Cause I already feel like I had this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I went to the audition and it was, uh, it was me. It, it, the casting director's name is Stephanie Gorin. She's one of the biggest casting directors in, in, in the city. And um, it was me and her or her assistant. And she was just saying like, you know, just, um, do this do the the scene um and just you know make it real and because i think it was just because i was so dropped into my body i i, I love theater so much because it really utilizes all of you mm -hmm. and yeah. i felt relaxed going in and so going in like that she said make it real like all day like you know what i mean yeah. like, you were already in there <laughs> yeah and it was like an argument scene and one of the things she said after i did it was it's really in, like really impressive that you're able to make this particular line. It was like, it was like, um, I forgot what it was. It was like, that's that you do this thing all the time, or that's something you do. Like, that's how you, uh, I forgot what the line was. It was like something like, you know, that's, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. You do this thing all the time. And yeah. it's, you, it could sound like typical, you know, you've, you've heard it before, one of those things. And she was like, it's really impressive. You can make it sound mm -hmm. like, believable and natural and so i walk, walked out of there going all day like oh, <laughs> I'm good. and i and I, I i found that i got it and um it's what and i also got the play oh and so i had already started a rehearsal for like we had like not a rehearsal but um like i had helped do chemistry reads for other characters in that play i was i said yes to the play already i was like ready to go um and then i found that i booked the part the part of slasher and now it's a battle of what do you yeah. do? Yeah, I mean, timing here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So because it, it was going on at the same time and the rehearsals and plays, you got to You're out. Yeah. Um, so I said yes to the project, no to the play. And um, and my fiance who was my girlfriend at the time. She had an audition for uh, the girl who plays my girlfriend in the show. And it was like I was helping her do chemistry for that. So her and I had just started dating. Mm. <laughs> okay. And we, I hadn't met the director yet. I didn't meet anybody from the show really, um, other than the, I think the producers and her and I were auditioning together, but I already had the part. So oh. I was like, 
I'm kind of good, <laughs> but like, I'm gonna help you out as much as I yeah. can. We yeah. just started dating. So we didn't know if we could tell them that we had just started dating, if we, that we're actually a couple. So we kind of pretended that we didn't know each other, but like oh, wow. we kind of seen each other in the same circles. Like, oh, so when so she came were... in, I was like, oh, hey, nice to see you again. And they was like, acting hey. all, year, all yeah. around. All the whole time. You were acting inside of acting. Exactly. It was like Inception. <laughs> oh, man. She didn't get the role. <laughs> and, oh, man. and she looked at me sideways for a long time because she was like this is all your fault and then it's funny uh i told the director that like actually you know that girl was my girlfriend he's like why why didn't you tell me that would oh been, man i would have been so we would have got to play more we, i probably would take more time with it you know what i mean all that kind of stuff but we were like super nervous you know what i mean yeah. it was like yeah. so much pressure you don't ever know, you know to like, mess anything up yeah i get it yeah you know Wow, but the, the the girl Rebecca Lydia, shout out to her because she ended up being my go girlfriend in the show, and she mm. was phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. phenomenal. Working with her was like was like it was so she she made it so authentic and real. Um, not even in the in the audition room, but actually on the day, like, and I mm. felt like I was like, I felt working with her was like I had to really like up my game with her. Yeah, oh, that's good. Because it was it was my first like lead you know like a serious regular kind of thing um where i'm in the show from beginning to end and right. you know we're actually like part of the main cast and so i was like nervous a lot uh for different things and being able to come into this moment and you know just doubt as an actor in your head sometimes of like oh do i even deserve this spot like i just got this role and you know, there's so many other people that I know that are better for it and all these kind of things and all these things that we think we know, but we don't know and just kind of second, second guessing God's blessings, all that kind of stuff. And um, working with her really helped ground me. And because she's a trained actor and I'm a trained actor. So it was mm -hmm. nice, nice to just kind of like, oh, she, we're both doing this thing together that we both know, that we both right. were, you know, familiar with, that we're both trained with. So mm -hmm. I can recognize that technique in her. She recognized it in me, and it really just helped. It helps you me. connect and, and grow. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. That's that's pretty. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I was just something I wondered if you were into the horror thing because, <laughs> you know, know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my>. yeah. <laughs> we're trying to watch Midsummer. Midsummer. You know, you know, um, say A twenty four produced uh, uh, horror. It has Flor Florence Pugh. She's, I think uh, I heard of it. it. It's on. It's on know. Amazon. I, I really want to watch it because I've heard it's like an incredible film and also a horror film. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, mm, <laughs> it off. You know what I mean? I'm just like, yeah, I kind of want to watch it, but I kind of don't. Like, I yeah. Watch it. I watch it with other people. I got to watch a comedy afterwards. Yeah, exactly. You got to bring <laughs> it back down. You gotta, you know what I'm <laughs> can't be the last thing I watch. Mm -mm, mm -mm. All right, so we're just going to run through some of your uh, careers and credits right now. So we talked about that. Uh, coroner, right? Yeah, yeah. Dope. Got to play a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> I, hey, went over well for me. So yep. did you always want to be an actor? Or did you ever consider any other profession or anything? You had anything else to draw from there? Um, it's funny, I, when, when I t did co-op, uh, my co-op teacher, he, he and I talked a lot and um, shout out to Mr. Poitras. He's another guy that really like elevated what I was trying to do. And um, he didn't know anything about acting, about theater. He was just like, mm -hmm. I just do co-ops and people to co-ops and help them out. But um, for you, because uh, I always, always told him like, if it's not acting, I'm going to go study astronomy and be an astronaut. Wow. Mm. So... And I, I don't have any like pilot experience and that's what you mm -hmm. need. So yeah. I was like, this is going to be take a long time, you know, yeah, long it's, journey. It's but either or. <laughs> either or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't do so, that. Um, so I take it you're not afraid of heights. Hell no. Mm -mm. <laughs> I used to live on the 11th floor when I was a kid. Now I'm on the 23rd. And oh. I was like, I need, I love being high. I hate roller coasters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't but, like them either. You know what I'm saying? But I love heights. I, I went skydiving for the first time last year. I'd do it again. Nice. I wouldn't bungee jump, but I love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> certain things. Um, yeah, certain cheap. things. <laughs> um, but I, I um, that's something I wanted to be. 
and he was he said you either want to study the stars or, or study with or be with the stars something like that oh that's a um, pretty amazing just tagline for your for your uh, life here it's the yeah. fortress. like what the hell like you just come out with not, wisdom man. like okay okay you're dropping um, gems on you yeah that's amazing <laughs> like, i'm not making like he really said that to me like wow uh, never forget it. it was crazy something some, some things like you'll, you'll always remember you know what i mean yeah because it feels like it's a movie now like you know, I'm, like, I'm in this little thing um but uh yeah he said that and it was like okay i he said you're either gonna if you decide you can always go to school and do both like you can you know study astronomy but also do acting on the side mm -hmm. other people do that it's great but i feel like if you do that you're gonna do the thing that is your like backup plan more so mm -hmm. yeah. so that there's there's for every ounce of energy that you're not putting into acting, there's someone putting 100% of that in. Exactly. Yep, exactly. And, just, and so he was kind of like really encouraging me to do this thing. And my parents, I, I, I have young parents, and my, my, they're all West Indian, both West Indian. Um, so they kind of come from a background where it's like, we want you to do something that's like scholarly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they always, always also always supported me in everything I wanted to do. So it was like, when I told them that I, I wanted to be an actor, um, they were like, good, go for it. But um, we really want you to do well in school too. And at one point, when I was trying to decide if I still wanted to act, I also kind of wanted to join the Air Force. So mm. that's just weird. Because again, I needed <laughs> pilot experience. Yeah. So the only way I could forget that was- so Let's go to the Air Force, Force. You, there it goes, your experience. You know what yeah. I mean? And my dad was like, and I think like, once I decided that I'm, with Mr. Porch's help, once I decided to, you know, follow acting 100%, my dad goes to me, he's like, so, you, so you're not going to go to the army anymore? And I'm like, yeah, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. He's like, okay, thank God. That's the only thing. <laughs> the only thing I, didn't want, I didn't want to say nothing. I didn't want to. So he didn't want to discourage you, but he, yeah. he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't you know, for it. That's a great, that's that's a great parent. Yeah, 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 for real. Yeah, yeah. He was kind of, you know, secretly in his heart, hoping that I got, made the right decision. Um, in the grand scheme of things. Hey, queen. <laughs> That's my fiance in the background. Oh, shout out right. to Kiana. Um, yeah, shout out to her back there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the only other thing. Like, uh, sometimes I think, like, I really like to play a teacher. I really like to play a teacher. I'm happy I got to play a doctor in any capacity. Yeah. That was my, um, uh, the last role my grandfather got to watch me do before he passed. He oh, passed sorry, like yeah, that. Man. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Um, he passed last year in July. And, um, you know, he, he was 70, you know what I mean? He was 70, you know, I was like, he good, he good. He, <laughs> yeah. he, always, he always said, he always said, like, God gives you three score and 10. And so he was good to go at 70. He was ready for that. And I was like, I, I ain't going to you know, be too mad about that. But I'm, I was happy yeah. to be able to play a doctor role. And let him see before, that. He, and let him, yeah, that, you know? yeah, that's, that's, that's great. That's great. I know he's smiling down still. All day, all day. <laughs> Did you like get any doctor's tips and start walking around the house like saying things to people? <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know. It was weird because my research for it, it was like you, you had to be really well trained in, in the doctor arts in order to be a forensic pathologist. Yeah, because the way you were talking on the show, I was like, wow, okay. Yeah, this, is, this is really good. Yeah. Slipped on water on his balcony, fell into a planter, bled out from a cut. It's a bizarre way to die. That's what Dr. Peterson said it was. You don't agree? Death by planter? No. No, these are chop marks, not a laceration. The edges are clean, defined. Could be the same tool used to dismember getting come out. Okay. Computers and a really bad cut. You have anything more to link the two? Yeah. So my research actually came to, I, I, I think I was going to buy like a forensic pathology book, like what they study at school. Yeah. Do you know the thing was like three hundred something dollars? Yep. Oh. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. Mm, mm, mm. Like YouTube Spark Notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Google, Google it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I got like a couple of YouTube videos that were just like giving me like the the bare gist of what happens. I actually found some videos with people like dissecting some stuff and looking oh. at some stuff and seeing how like you could tell this person died from this thing because you know, they smoke too much or they did it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of like, seeing how it, this person feels and how familiar and comfortable they are with the, our internal organs. So I did that, 
research coupled with like we actually had a forensic pathologist on set mm -hmm. telling us how we would hold things and how we would do things and how he would do things and what it's like in the environment and um one of the first days early on in, uh, shooting it we had like a fly catcher thing because there would be a lot of flies in a dead mm -hmm. like in a, in a morgue um so we had like this fly zapper yeah. And it, I never, it was so funny because Serena and I were doing this scene together. Remember, it's, it's really intense talking about this person who died, nah, 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 all this kind of stuff and medical jargon. And all you hear is <laughs> in the background, <laughs> he's doing that. And it's like this fly zapper thing. This flies are just like getting zapped and it's like making this loud like slap <laughs> sound. So we had to get used to that. But then I think they took it out after a while because like, okay, the realism is enough. We got it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, my co-host here. Um, yeah, I actually, uh, was, some, I used uh, to do that. <laughs> I used to do that. Really? Yeah, yeah man. Uh, I don't like know forensic how. Forensic pathology? Yeah. Oh, um, wow. I, I've done many autopsies. Uh, yeah, once upon That's a time. crazy. What made you yeah. stop? Like, <laughs> uh, he told me well, so many gross things and stories <laughs> that I am terrified. No, nah, <laughs> You know what it was? Um, I got used to seeing blood and, and, you know, like things that's out of the ordinary. I started getting used to it. So I felt like I was losing myself. So I was just mm. like, you know what? Let me, let me, uh, and I was having a daughter. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just pack my stuff and then we're going to move and I'm just going to find something else new to do. And then he so ran from New York. <laughs> yeah, I ran from New York and uh, <laughs> I didn't look back. Let me tell you something because that's really mature that's really powerful and that's really strong and brave of you to do yeah. as an adult to make that decision because that's just, you know I'm, I'm assuming that forensic pathology is a that pays you well yeah, yeah definitely. doctor of that field pays you well it definitely does and you're having a daughter so you're thinking in your mind okay if i'm having a daughter and i have a job that's you know that's good standing that i'm you know what i mean i'm successful in doing yeah a lot of people would think, stay in this thing that I'm doing. Yeah, but, but when right. you start to lose yourself, it's just like, all right. Exactly. But you are of the present mind that you are losing yourself. A lot yeah. of people lose themselves and aren't, don't, and don't know it. Right. That yeah. Is correct. Yeah. Yeah. That is correct. Kudos to you, my friend. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So uh, is there any roles that you would not take? Sometimes, honestly, I say, like, I don't like the whole, I feel like there's a lot of uh, big agenda with, like, drugs. Mm -hmm. There's, like, a lot of content that we have in these days in the music and yeah. movies and films. And even from the 80s and, like, 70s and 90s, a lot of, like, films that promote drugs. That, like, the use of drugs that glorify the use of drugs and, you know, this person spirals down this thing, but it's really fun. You know what I mean? Like, really the bad thing. They yeah. end up like at you know in the gutter, but they had a good time getting there. You know, it, I always I never want to be a part of that. So I, I feel like that's kind of my main thing is I, I really avoid the abuse of drugs. I don't like to promote it in anything I do because uh, I feel like it's poisoning us. And yeah, it, it definitely is. I don't know so much about weed. I think weed is like uh, technically a drug too, but it's also like a natural medicinal plant. So I don't yeah really know where I stand with that. I never I'm, really I'm with you. Film. On that one, I'm I'm back and forth. I'm on the fence. <laughs> I mean, it, it's I not know. my thing personally. I don't participate in any of it. But you know, we all have friends and and people yeah, around yeah, we us. All got exactly. Exactly. And exactly. you don't want to look at them like you know. But I don't look at you. But, and also, I can see how like it, it can help you in whatever you're doing. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but then when it comes to like the cocaine and the oh, yeah. some people doing meth and crack, yeah, and, it's too much. You know, ecstasy and M and all these kind of things that like expand your mind but also like it, people can really and then now the whole thing is like pharmaceutical drugs yeah you know, and that's being really promoted and, and and glorified in certain ways in certain aspects like i'm watching a show and you can see that this character is dealing with a lot of stuff and it needs to go to rehab or so and so whatever but the visuals of it if i'm a kid watching this or my I'm a, my mind still isn't like mature enough to wrap around these things i'm looking at this shit like this is fucking dope <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, talk my language, but I'm looking no, at it's it looks right. really it's cool. Right. So I, I, just, I really cautious of like being a part of anything that really like 
can see be seen as pushing that in any kind of you know forward okay. narrative, making it look positive. Mm. Right. Okay, so you wouldn't do a sequel to Breaking Bad? Nah. <laughs> nah. All right, just check it. Just check it. But then you see, like, I would I would love to do a film where if it talks about the downward spiral, it really talks about the downward spiral. Like, yeah, is it, you know, re- Requiem for a Dream, where like these guys are all like junkies and they're dealing with stuff, but at the end you see like Marlon loses his arm. Homeboy, you know what I mean? They're like, you see you know, the, the, the tragedy behind it down and yeah. out. Cause I feel like, and it, so if I would be a part of something like that now, it would, it, I wanted to really speak to like the destruction it could cause, like, like Beautiful Boy, you know, some, a film where it really sh- highlights, like, it, you'll need to really do that, you know, ah, yeah. Long and short <laughs> of it is that's what I really want to do. Or if I were to be given that opportunity, that's what I want to do with it. So if they're kind of steering it in any kind of way that kind of, for me, seems mm-hmm. like, feels like it's glorifying it, then that's what I ask that. Okay. Okay. Um, I am a Arrowverse fan. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you ever heard of this uh, Arrowverse thing they have of going course. on. You know, um, they had a legends of tomorrow had a, yep. a pretty interesting episode yep, 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 yep. <laughs> they had a they had a pretty interesting guy on there you want to tell us about that <laughs> oh yeah i'd love to um i got to play a young barack obama barry obama as they called him in the show mm-hmm. um yeah that again another role i got to do before my grandpa passed and I'm so happy. Like, that's part of the reason why I love being an actor. Because we get to do things that, like, speak to something. You know what I mean? Speak so, mm-hmm. so far out. And to so many, like, what-if scenarios and this idea and this creativity. and this, You know what I mean? It just, yeah. It's just kind of so open and free and exciting. So, like, even though I'm not a president, and right. I, I probably never will be, I got to play someone who ends up being the future president. Did you and feel any pressure from that? Yeah. But then... <laughs> it's like, but then, like, how does someone tell you, oh, you're going to play a young Barack Obama? <laughs> for me, like, the pressure was... I didn't feel no pressure because no one said I had to do anything really um, mm-hmm. that was specific to him until I got there. And then one of the... I think it was the line producer or some was like pulling me to the side saying, you got to really like get his stuff down. <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> like here's this video, here's this video, here's this video I found that actually talks about him in his like early life without like, before he like did the speeches and stuff and he actually got to like really speak proper. Here's right. how yeah. he speaks in his like, his as a young on, kid. Back in Chicago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't think anybody cared like that bad. You know, cause like I, I uh, naturally you audition with that cadence. Right, mm-hmm. you audition with the like the idea of yeah. this could be him, and I had been growing on my hair anyways for the show, so I had this natural like seventies fro, and I was like all day. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, so when she gave me, and honestly, thank God for it because I, I felt that pressure, but there's also this pressure of like, if I don't do it, it's not going to get done. Right, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, there's that kind of like that self pressure of like, if if I don't do this thing, then it's not going to look good and it'll be only my fault. Right. So um, she, her putting that little like behind the scenes pressure on me was like really, really worth it. And, um, you know, we see it like sometimes when I watch it back, I'm like, oh man, I did that. Like I was, <laughs> like, I, was I was zoned out um, and getting to play, getting to play, um, opposite so many people like who I obviously I, I'm a fan of the Arrowverse too so I right. see Sarah Lance that was gonna um, be my, my next question her. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was honestly the scenes with her were so like amazing right. kept reaffirming that I was doing a good job because every time between takes you'd be like oh my god he sounds so, many, so much like him <laughs> like if I'm closing my eyes like it really is him. <laughs> and I was like okay thank you um, so it, working with her was so fun and so relaxed and so like, there's so much like peace going on there. And that's and, a big uh, cast too. Yeah. The notes and the redirects I was getting from the director was, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
I'm I'm playing. I had a scene with um with uh oh my god, Brandon Ruth. Mm-hmm. And I had to take a picture with him because I'm like, you know, you're like early Superman, right? Like, <laughs> don't think that I don't know this. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> you know, so yeah, like I was, I was, I was going crazy and and speaking to people, and I, I love being in an environment where I'm surrounded by veterans, people that I could actually look up to, because I'm looking at them, going like, you know, where'd you study? Like, you know, what's your experience like? And they're talking to me like I'm a friend and not just a fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, where like you, you get to you hope to run into this person in the streets, but then you do, and like you kind of don't want to ask them anything that kind of seems like you're kind of yeah. on their coattails. But now you're in this yeah. environment where it's just you and them, and like you can talk to them about anything. So I get to like ask them all these questions and talk to them like on a personal level, and it's just like it just felt really nice to get to receive yeah. that energy from them. So um, so you say you're an Arrowverse fan, just. Which which one's your favorite if you have one out of the shows? <laughs> and you can't say legends. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I don't know. I think I'm I'm deepest into Arrow, but okay. um I I have like a friend who's like a series regular now on, on Flash. Oh really? My boy uh, uh Chester. Flash dope. Oh Chester? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He so, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, when did he come on? This season, last season, the end of last season, or beginning of this season? No, 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 no. End of last season. End of last. End of last, end of last season. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, so. I'm a big comic book guy, so. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I got these. I just got these in the mail. I don't know what they are. A friend of mine <laughs> sent them to me. But you tell me. You see, I got Megatron. Okay. You know my Megatron. No, I don't know about that one. Yeah, I got this old like like X Men comic. God loves okay. and kills. Uh huh. I got Mosaic. I think he's like more like indie oh, yeah. comics. No, Mosaic is uh he's Marvel. He's an Inhuman. He's from the Inhumans lines. He's fairly new. Maybe last three years. I think he debuted. He's uh, uh he can jump into people's bodies and things like that. Oh, yeah. I actually have that one. That's why. <laughs> you, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> that's a Sunday read right there. Yeah. We'll be looking forward to those. <laughs> all right, that's what's up. Okay, um, all right, go ahead, Lee, because I'm not going to get into the geeky stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's stuff I want to get into because this is what I'm into. Um, I'm trying to get into it. Uh, I've been doing a little research on you, and uh, you also write, you know. So, tell us a little bit about War on Love and how that project oh, came about. <laughs> um. That was, uh, there's this thing in Toronto called the T.O. Monologue Slam. And I mean, I guess, I guess I shouldn't say it's in Toronto now. It's like, it's gone to Vancouver and it's gone to Jamaica. Um, but uh, it's just, it's just uh, my mentor, Andre Newell. Um, and uh, he like runs this monologue slam. And um, he's been doing it for like a few years now, like maybe like eight. And okay. And uh, I, w- I was participating in one. I got, I got like, it's just like you, it's like a poetry slam, mm-hmm. but um, um, you do monologues. Okay. And you get up on stage and it's, the venues always change. Um, and you like compete against other actors and do these monologues and the audience wow. kind of like, they got judges and stuff. It's really, really, really cool. And I, I find that has been like super, um, super like, great for my like development as an actor because i'm on stage you know doing these monologues in front of people and like i've won like three times so it was really good to like just get that it filled my confidence up really get my yeah. confidence up um cause my first one i was super nervous took a shot of like ray and nephew <laughs> jamaican overproof white rum like i wasn't playing yeah, like, I, was I drink that all the time <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying like it was scary um, so I, I know now, like, it's just like a really great opportunity for actors. Um, so there's this girl <laughs> that I had a big crush on that we, we used to go to the slam and, uh, we had talked here and there and nothing really ever came out of it. And we actually really connected, but it was just like, you know, different time and, you know, ghosting yeah. was all this kind of stuff. And I was like, I'm not going to get ghosted. I'm way too cute for that. <laughs> so I, I went up on stage. I knew she was going to be there. So I went up on stage and I, I had actually written this monologue 
called The War on Love. And I was pretty much saying that like, it was, it's like this, like cool to be apathetic and it's cooler to not care and to do things like, you know, it's more popular culture to do these things mm -hmm. because yeah. there's like this war, the World War Three is going on, is going on in our hearts. Oh my gosh, it sounds mm. so weird now. But, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, but yeah, it's, pretty, it's, that's it's dope, true. Though. It's true though. <laughs> that's dope. It, it, there's a lot of truth to that. It was, it was something really personal I was really feeling and um, I wanted to uh, just really voice that to her and also to the, show it to other people. Um, and um, Andre really liked it and wanted to shoot it. And uh, so we did, did a little short, it's like a short, um, and yeah, we did that together, went to some festivals, it was really, really cool. And I, I, that's part of the reason why I look at Andre as a mentor of mine, because he, another guy who really, you know, really wanted to, I saw yeah. my development and wanted to elevate it. Um, but yeah, that was um, my first kind of thing that I ever wrote that was shot and mm -hmm. did this. So how hard was it to write that though? It was easy. It was easy because oh, it was so easy. It was in the, yeah, okay, I get it, I get yeah, it. Right straight from the heart, it was straight from the heart. Um, and I structured it in a monologue way. Um, but I wrote this other project that you'll probably never see, which <laughs> breaks my heart to say, but it's, um, I have to remove myself emotionally from it. Cause I, I think that's where I write from. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there was this one project that me and my boys do cause we have a production company together. Okay. Okay. Nice. And um, uh, we wanted to produce our own work, and it was uh, around the time where, when um, Alton Sterling was murdered, and we were mad. We were all so mad. Like mm. there's seven of us, and we were just like seven black boys from different communities, uh, you know, African, Jamaican, Guyanese, you know, this, that, and the third. Right. And it was, but we all feel the same. Yeah. And we're all actors. And we're, we, we're all um, feeling this kind of similar feeling, but have a different mental perspective. So one of, some, well, some of us were saying, like, we got to do this. We got to, like, change what we do. Like, I got to, like, go around the world and, like, be part of the UN and stuff. I got to go, you know what I mean? Go do that. Right. Be more diplomatic. Right. Mm -hmm. I got to speak through my work and make sure that the content I'm doing is really poignant and really talks about these things in, until it stops happening. I got to go mess some people up. I got to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we all had these different perspectives. And then we said, yo, we got to like start making our own work because we got to talk about something. And these yeah. projects that we're auditioning for, ain't talking about nothing. So uh, we decided that then and there to actually like make this about producing our own work and actually putting our own like content, literally like ideas, put it into a hat, choose which one we're going to do. And we do that one. Wow. And so that same night, I, I started writing this project called The Old Proverb. And, and I, I hesitate to say I, cause I really feel like I was like, that God was moving the spirit through me that day yeah. when I first wrote it. And then like, I had to refine it and tweak it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, it was this idea that I had, and I'm, this the idea is patented. So I'm looking at y'all, you better not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's this idea that um, the similarities between these historical figures um, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Huey, uh, Rodney King, um, mm -hmm. and uh, Marcus Garvey, mm -hmm. and their ideologies are not so dissimilar from what's going on today and how the young black youth think today. And yeah. but this the idea the, the ideologies are spread so wide amongst so many people, like mm -hmm. they they literally live on. And I want to show the the mirrors. Um, how what's going on today is very is not very different than what happened back then. Back then, right. yeah. And so I wanted to um, draw this like kind of like a what if scenario, kind of take like Tarantino like liberties, and say like what if um, Martin died before Malcolm, mm -hmm. and what would that look like? And also, what would it look like if Marcus Garvey was in the same room? as Rodney King who, that happened in the 90s, but put all these people together, take like creative liberties and put mm -hmm. all these opinions in the same room and how people feel. The person who actually got, received the biggest brunt of police brutality, right. what does he say? Mm -hmm. 
uh, what is the man who said, let's, let's, let's go back to Africa and make this, own, make this place our own because we ain't got none over here. What does he say? What does Malcolm say? What does Martin say? Um, and what is the person who started the Black Panthers? What do they, what do they say? And really um, shape these, get, get these talks really specific. Yeah. And, and I was really interested in seeing what they thought in this, uh, about what's going on now and then mirroring that, those conversations with what's going what? on in the present oh, yeah. when uh, this dude, not a descendant of Martin, but like a similar thing happens to him and yeah. his friends. And now bringing these different perspectives and these same people, an African dude who's from like Cameroon talking about like, I'm out of here. Like we right. don't belong here. And another person saying like, bro, we got to just like mess some people up. Another person saying like, nah, we can't do that. We got to fight inner city struggles. Da, 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 da. Right. And, um, really having a conversation. So it's called The Old Proverb. I wrote it and we shot it and it wasn't what I wanted. So it's never coming out. <laughs> Reshoot it now. You're going to give us this synopsis and this amazing just whole thing and oh, then just say we're never going to get it. That is horrible. <laughs> look, man. Look, some of our favorite rappers are, uh, and our favorite musicians have content that we will never hear and only leak that snippets to. So, yeah, true. yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, at least could you just please, just to make me be able to sleep well at night, say if you do ever, if you don't decide to move forward with it yourself, if you find someone through your journey, your career, who you think can handle it, just let them do it. Because I think that's a good <laughs> idea. And it would be yeah. a shame if it went to waste. It would be a shame. That, it would. It would. I, I'm really open to that, actually. Yeah, um, and like I said, like I had to, I have to remove myself from it emotionally because it's, it's, right. it's, yeah. it's a passion project of mine. So mm -hmm. It's a baby, and um, I really wanted just to be, just just to be right, and I wanted it to look right, and I wanted it to right. feel right, and I wanted the, yeah, everything the imagery. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean. And right. so yeah. I, I was too precious. I was getting too precious with it, mm -hmm. and so I feel like you're right. I have to like maybe if someone else wants to take it and run with it later on, I got to right. be able to get to a place where I can give it to them and trust that they're going to do it. Right. The right hands. The right yeah, Someone way. you're comfortable with. Have yeah. either of you seen The Last Black Man in San Francisco? No. I haven't seen it. Watch no. it. Watch it. It really? is beautiful. I'm going to mark that and down right now. From now on. The Last Black Man in San Francisco. When I make movies, like the, the desire to make a film has to look and feel similar to that not the same but like just that it makes me it evokes similar emotions and feelings and that when i'm looking at a film I'm, it's almost like i'm looking at a painting or looking at like yeah. the sky and how beautiful the sky and is how much it can change and how vivid the colors are mm -hmm. and okay. we just didn't have the technology and the money to make it look like that right. so well, like until it does yeah <laughs> yeah, it's nothing wrong with that you got to have it right especially if it's a passion project you know mm -hmm. and timing everything you know when it when it's supposed to come, it'll come. It'll come, yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Whew, that that was pretty heavy right there though. Like <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty heavy. I'm looking forward. Do, do you plan on doing some more writing and giving us something, Absolutely. some things coming soon or anything? Or Absolutely. Um well now we had this quarantine, so I ain't got on choice but to write something. <laughs> yeah. Um so uh, I'm working on this like my first feature because I've I've written a bunch of shorts since then that uh, not a bunch but a couple um that i want to do but i i i've always been scared of writing a feature film because it's just so long yeah <laughs> uh, it's a lot shorts. of i'm like yeah. yeah a lot of elements you got to bring back and the things and I'm, the whole story arc got to work out right <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> so i'm writing yeah. my first feature now and i'm i'm gonna like uh refine it refine it refine it but i just want to get it down on paper first get the idea that yeah. i'm gonna put out get it out on paper and make it something, you know? Yeah. All right. That's, that's pretty good, man. It just almost seems like now should have had that at the end. At the end. It's, hard, <laughs> it's hard to go on to questions now. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's I'm all right. <laughs> um, I guess the follow up would be um, the cats out of the bag on this power book too. Yep. Yep. You're involved some way. I'm pretty yes, sure indeed. you can't really say much of anything. Man, no, I, I, it's, I, I, it's, it's fine. I understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we, really, we uh, definitely understand. We know how that whole power situation go and the things that's going on with the show. And 
-hmm. it's good people enjoy the mystery sometimes you have to enjoy the not knowing like today so many things is always i've seen the trailer and the trailer trailer the behind the scenes you Mm -hmm. know everything before it comes to you sometimes you just gotta enjoy it go along for the ride this is one of those situations because he's not gonna tell you anything no one's gonna tell you anything so just Mm -hmm. just be in it and go along for the ride but um i guess maybe you could tell us something like did you get to meet 50 at any time in the audition or recording oh. process? How was that? Um, I can tell you all about that, actually. Okay. I, can tell you, I can tell you so many things. I can tell you a little bit about my character. My character is an artist, which is uh, mm. oh, okay. uh, something that I really like put yeah. forward, highlighted. And Courtney is taking the time and care with her writers and through being the showrunner to make sure that is uh, taken care of. And, and that, um, there's, there, there's a, um, uh, that we ensure that my character, Drew, um, is fully fleshed out, is fully, and all the characters are fully fleshed out and, and yeah. specific and dynamic. Um, so I'm really like, I'm just really happy that like, as soon as I got the audition for it, I was like, I'm all, all day. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. in all day. Like, because we don't sometimes like, especially as like a black actor, we don't always get these auditions that like mean something to us. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and then when you get those, and then so sometimes you get precious with like, when you fall in love with an audition, mm-hmm. it's like, oh man, I never fell in love with anything in like in two years. Like, <laughs> I mean, you just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, this has to be it. This has to be two have, years. <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> but then you're, of course, you're going to fall in love with this great piece of art because it's great piece of piece art. Piece of art, right. But then you can't control that they have like eight offers out to like, De, you know Denzel Washington and John <laughs> David Washington. You know what I mean? Like they have offers for people that yeah. also fell in love with this thing. Yeah. So, like you can be married to it. So when I felt I found, uh, got this audition, I was like, "This is something that I really want to do." And I, I, um, I do a lot of my self tapes with Kiana, uh, my fiance, mm-hmm. okay. and she she's also an incredible actress. Child of Trinkets, uh, season two is coming out soon. Um, but she is like my best best reader because she also gives me notes and we're comfortable enough that we can actually listen to each other and not get in right. our egos. Okay. So um, I did the scene and the scene is just me dealing with my sister. She's trying to tell me like, let's play some basketball. And I'm like, no, I'm drawing something. And um, did it, did it once. And I had the idea to just look at something and actually try to really draw it. And uh, Kiana said, draw the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And for me, I always look at that because I watched it back while I was like heading to LA for the, for the screen test or for the mm-hmm. uh, director session. Yeah. And I was watching back my tape because I was like, what the hell did I do? Like, I don't even know how to. <laughs> can, can, you, can you actually draw? Hell no. <laughs> I, I, okay, no let, let me give myself some more credit. Sorry. Um, I can. But. I, when I was growing up as a kid, that was not my art. That was not my art. I was seeing kids draw Super Saiyan, like Goku. And the, oh, yeah, that's the, the number one thing. Things. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> let me try to draw that. And I'm like, just ugly. It's all like wavy. It, 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 no. And uh, my, I always looked at my draw. Like, I always stayed in the kid phase of drawing. You know what I mean? So, I like, make it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like not flower, my thing. My flowers are always like... T- <laughs> maybe i do a little pedal here and there but i could never like get in there you know what i mean yeah yeah um so my artist perspective was always from my body um and uh i was just i chalked it up to that and i was like that's what i'm gonna do i can i'm really good at music um but that's it and uh it wasn't until i got the challenge of doing this this role where courtney asked me in the director session like can you draw and i said i can learn and that's it. You can have, you don't ask me nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's it. He's like, okay. He's like, but I said, I drew something re- that I really, really, really cared about and really thought was really good when I was in grade four. I was in the fourth grade, or fifth grade, one and two. I drew this like werewolf with like wings because I love mm. wolves. And I love the idea of werewolves in like a non-demonic kind of way, just like yeah. really uh-huh. cool to transform into a wolf. Um, and I drew it with wings because I thought it was like the, uh, this concept of like this like werewolf mixed with like an angel kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it was the most detailed, beautiful drawing that I don't know where it is, probably lost it somehow, but I was so pleased with how it came out. So I told her that. I drew that, and that was the only thing I've ever drawn since that was good. <laughs> um, 
and I got the role, thank God. And it was my first project, uh, series, like a series regular out here. And that's why I live in New York now. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been a blast. We got to go to the, uh, power finale, like after party. Right. Yeah. And that's where I met 50. And see, it's weird. Again, I'm an actor, so I guess I like I move in a certain uh, environment that I'm expected to see people and like behave. Right. But you gotta understand something, okay? Fifty Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying came out in '03. Yeah. I'm 28 years old. '03 mm-hmm. was 17 years ago. Right. I was 11 years old. 12, maybe 13, that kind of like age range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I'm listening to Fifty Cent. And I'm loving every lyric, every, every minute, single every song. Every second. As soon, I don't know if you guys remember this, but when the massacre came out, it was supposed uh-huh. to be called the Valentine's Day massacre beforehand, yes. but yeah, then they absolutely. had to change it because of censoring all kinds of stuff. I was actually and working at a record company at that time. <laughs> yeah, so you know, so you, were in, you know what I mean? You were in it. Yeah. I was in it. Me and my best friend. Hey, we from Queens. We, we was in it. Trust yeah. me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> When BET had the um, world premiere uh, show, like when they used to premiere like uh, behind the scenes, I forgot what it was called, but they used to mm-hmm. premiere like music videos and stuff. And right. like, yeah. So they dropped, uh, he dropped the album. And before he was going to drop the album, he kept doing this, this like pre-release stuff and like little things here and there. A lot and, of promo. Mm-hmm. And he was doing the world premiere for, I forgot, forgot what song it was. But... Every time, oh, it was for Out of Control, I guess. Yeah. I think, yeah. So every time they would go to commercial, they would do like the little beat for Out of Control <laughs> in between, you know what I mean? And then I'm like, with my boy, I'm like, what song is this? Like, this song is terrible. <laughs> and so when the, song, when the album dropped, I was hunting for that song. So when the song was on the album, I went crazy. Like, I'm like a little like boy, like tearing yeah. up listening to this amazing song. I'm like, the beat's incredible. Disco Inferno when it was on the radio was like, but like mm-hmm. everything had to stop and drop when the song came on <laughs> on the radio. People yeah. need to stop talking in the car, turn it up, Max. Like, yo, yeah. that's it. This one for it's every going, lyric. It's going down. Yeah. I used to think, I used to be so obsessed with uh, in the club that I didn't think there was any cussing in the song. I thought it was the per- per- most perfect <laughs> song. It was a good upbeat song because I always heard the edit, right? Because I was a kid. Yeah, right. And I was like, Mom, like, there's no cussing in it. Like, I can just listen to it <laughs> and actually sing it out loud. <laughs> When I finally heard the unedited version on the album, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> my parents were like, that's what you think. But um, I used to love, like, 50 Cent was my favorite rapper. Like, you don't understand, like, my favorite. Curtis, when that whole Curtis, him and, like, Kanye West dropping the graduation at the same time, that whole, oh, like. Oh, yeah, that thing. was the big Listen, competition. Right there. The I'm, big I'm competition. just like you, man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big 50 fan. Yeah, he's, I would admit he's. He's the big fifty fan here. I'm the big between 50 the two fan. of us. He's the he's the bigger fifty that, fan. That hard. We could chop it up. I, I, I love G Unit. I had G Unit chain. I had G Unit shoes. I was going crazy. Yeah, you had the G Unit wife beater. I didn't get the wife beater because I, I wasn't like old enough to wear a wife beater. You know, that makes sense. Okay. You're like a little kid. I went to, you didn't have I went, a big wife Thank you. But and I went to uniform was, school. The dress was fly though. They had the, 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 the colors on the. <laughs> so and you never wrong, seen nobody else with them. You no, know, yeah. nobody else listen. with him. No, man. Listen, like, and that's like, I loved what what G Unit Fifty Cent represented. Yeah, was that like we're gonna take something and make it and make it and really push this thing. Whatever the whatever we're behind, we're gonna be behind it, behind it hundred percent. And there was this conviction that Fifty Cent had that right. I, it was inspiring as a kid. It was like, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. And if in whatever it by any means necessary, whatever you think is wrong or right. I don't give a damn. And now you yeah. see 50 Cent today, and he's and that same personality mm-hmm. is infused into his he work nowadays. And I love it because it reminds me of growing up and being able to talk so much shit with your friends yeah. and make fun of them and say, like, your, your mom got two toes. Like, and, like, <laughs> and even if your mom actually has two toes, you're not taking it personal as a kid. You're like, oh, whatever, your mom had, got a, a big-ass forehead. And, right. you know, just going back and forth. <laughs> And being able to take it and have that thick skin and yeah. not take it beyond, you know what I mean? Taking that same energy, 50 Cent has the same energy that he does now with his like peers and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah, really absolutely. takes the piss out of them. People who yeah. take them, themselves really seriously. Yes. And I, when I see it, I'm like, this is hilarious. 
Yeah. They might not think so. But <laughs> I, mean, I love usually, it. Usually, definitely not at the time they don't think so. Maybe in retrospect, <laughs> they look back and say, that might have been kind of funny, but no, they, they don't yeah, take it. Of course, of course. And I, and I get it. It's public image, you know what I mean? You, you yeah. don't really want to tarnish that. I get it. Trust me, I get it. Um, especially as an actor. But um, I, I, what I mean to say is I love 50 Cent and I got to rock with him. Right. So having to put all that in, in a, a box, box. <laughs> <laughs> and say, that's great. Ain't got nothing to do with me and him right now in this moment. Let me just shake right. his hand. Is, nice to meet yeah. you, Fifty. I, I know your work. <laughs> that's great. it. Let's go. You know he what I mean? Was, I have to hold all that in. He was yelling on the inside, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the inner kid in you was like, 50. <laughs> oh, man. Like, like, like young Lavelle with the little red radio it was, that played CDs at the same time <laughs> was not thinking that he would ever meet 50 Cent or right. be on a show that he's like executive producing. Yeah, how? Yeah, that's, 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 that's you see dope. The way that's just, that's God, man. The way the world works is just full circle, man. Yes. Full yes, circle. Yes. Yeah, man. Yes, 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 yes. So, I gotta ask, was there? I mean, well, we kind of just let me earlier. just say shout out to Fifty really to quick. One oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know for me growing up, not directly, but his influence has got oh. me a lot of jobs in the ring. <laughs> I was a, a sound engineer. <laughs> I was a recording engineer, studio engineer, and wow, a lot of people don't know that. Even though you only heard certain artists come out, of course, like you said, there's a lot of projects that never are released, and there's a lot of artists that get picked up in that whirlwind of you know, the whole everything, the shady G-Unit aftermath mm -hmm. thing that never went out. Mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of getting a lot of work, working with a lot of those artists because they were based in Queens at that time. So shout out to wow. him for helping wow. me make a living back then. All day, all day, all day. <laughs> Real. He, he don't even know, man. He yeah, he doesn't <laughs> even know. Like his he influence know. did so much. <laughs> yup, yup. But yeah, I want to get back on, on it. Uh, was there, I, we kind of spoke about it a little bit earlier. But I want to just touch on it again. Was there ever a time where you wanted to quit or give up? Like, did you did you felt like it was it? Like, yeah, you don't want to act no more? Or I I think that I've gone through those kind of uh, spouts, but not in a way where I I entertain those thoughts seriously. Yeah. Um. Because I feel like. I've heard this from actors before, like you kind of want to get to that place as an idea so that because because you we think that the next role is going to come right, <clears throat> right as soon as we get there. Does that make sense? Like right yeah. on the other side of like, I'm going to give up. I'm done. And we that, get yeah. the call that changes our lives. Yeah. So so I feel like some actors like really fake, like not fake get there, but like try to get to that place or like want to entertain that place so that they can get that next part. I've definitely been one of those actors. Um, but I don't think I've entertained it seriously quitting. Like, I, I, it's just because, like, I really feel like I just started. Mm -hmm. So I ain't got no right to quit. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, yeah that makes know, sense. Definitely. If I look back on it, I've probably been doing this for all, over a decade now. But, like, I really feel like I just started. Like, I just got to do this thing now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. what's, there's so many, so many opportunities and greatness ahead of me. That I'm like, I ain't got no right to be like, I'm gonna quit because the thing's not working if I haven't been work, uh, I haven't had a great audition in a month or so and so. You know what I mean? I've been yeah. uh, fortunate enough and blessed by God not to have to struggle that hard when it comes to, you know, being in between roles. Mm -hmm. I've consistently worked enough, whether it be on stage or doing a project that helps me pay this bill here and there. It, there's been times where I got to the point where I was shaking the can. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, kind of scraping by. Yeah. Um, but uh, by God's grace alone, like, there have been so many times where, like, I've been like, man, I don't know how I'm going to make it, like, to the, like, I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I don't know, like, my credit card bills are so high because I'm just, like, having to put payments on these credit card bills. And for us as actors, there's a lot of things we have to pay for, like, just services of being on like breakdown express. You got to pay for that every month and mm -hmm. active pitch. You got to pay for that and union dues, all these kind of things that just still end up being payments, even if you're not working. Right. Yeah. Um, 
so then you got to put that on the car and then the car, you don't know if you can make the minimum payment, all those kind of things. Like, and that woman over there, that <laughs> woman over there has literally helped me. Like literally said, like, I know you can't pay your bills. Let me send you some money that you can pay your bills this month. You know what I mean? And now you're thinking as a man, ah, oh, you know, yeah. like I got to be the provider. I got to be the one that I got to be able to take care of us. Yeah. But if you, if it's funny because that thought did happen within me and those feelings did happen within me. Mm-hmm. But it's like, God shows you that like, you gotta, you know, better, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, that you need this help and that you've been asking for this kind of right. help and that you need to accept it no matter like you, you've yes. read the, you've read the scripture when the, when the guy in the boat saying like, or drowning in water and, and, He's saying, God's going to come send me a boat. And eight people come by and say, yo, come on. He's uh-huh. like, no, no, no. God's going to come get me. He drowns. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're asking for that. You're expecting the help. Yeah. So you're, I, you're, you, you're blessed I to that. literally have a great woman behind you. And so I accept that help regardless, you know, regardless of whatever ego is. Because I recognize and I have been given the grace to recognize that it is just ego and that's all it is mm-hmm. you know it is just that i'm just being an arrogant guy that doesn't need to be an arrogant guy by not accepting you know what i mean i need right. help that's it and mm-hmm. and we can be partners in that um yeah. so i've been blessed with a partner that is like you know when i haven't been working she's been working and vice versa um it's a wonderful thing man so yeah entertaining the thoughts of quitting like with that kind of structure with that kind of like with God at the helm and this woman behind me, like I, it just, it seems dumb. Like, okay. <laughs> but the, but the only time where it would make sense to me is if I'm not having fun. If I'm not enjoying right. what I'm doing anymore. Right. Thank God, exactly. Thank God I haven't been at, at that place. Yeah. That's good. That's, uh, Hey, that's all it is right there. That's packaged. Well said. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think you could poke any holes in that. <laughs> What you're doing. I got an airtight argument. Look, I got yeah. lawyers on this, okay? Like, like, I love what I'm doing. I have support. Why would I quit? I just started. That's it. There's nothing that's else to it. say here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't, I shouldn't, for lack of a better word, it doesn't, doesn't seem dumb to me, but it seems like if I, I would be doing myself a disservice if I entertain right. those kinds of thoughts. Right? Yeah. Like, I, wait, would they wouldn't be truthful to me. I'd just be like doing that to make drama mm-hmm. for myself. When there really isn't anything, if, if I'm just patient and I trust God, that I don't have to worry about those things. I just right. don't have to worry about it. And I only worry about those kinds of things if I'm choosing to entertain those kinds of worries. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's just me doing that to make that noise for myself because I have to do something. Right. Yeah. You know? All right. That's great. Okay. Well, what we usually do here when we start coming to the end is we have like sort of like a... I change the name of it every show. It's like a lightning round type of thing. We're just oh, going to yeah. ask you some quick questions. I'll just slow down for those. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, an actor that you haven't worked with that you would like to work with? Herschel Ali. Mm. Denzel Washington. Milo Davis. Jake oh. Gyllenhaal. <laughs> okay. One? Um, Jake Gyllenhaal. Nice. Al nice. I think Jake Gyllenhaal is pretty underrated, but go. <laughs> Same. Um, if you could pick... Any movie to redo, like r- remake, what would it be? Hurricane. Ah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, what do you like more, stage acting or cinema like camera acting? Damn it. Film. I haven't done a film, like I haven't led a film yet, and I really want to. Okay. Um, what's a movie or TV show that you weren't involved with that you feel is underrated? Last Black Man in San Francisco. Detroit. I'm gonna watch that okay. from your recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you got, Leek? Uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. Oh, uh, come on, come on. I got. I, I, come favorite on. food. Right, favorite food. Jerk chicken. Jerk chicken. Nice. Uh, fit, Leek, fit, you, fit. you didn't ask your one that you always ask. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, I got. I got a few. Hold up. Uh, favorite city. Chicago. Never been. Want to go. <laughs> okay, okay. That's the first. <laughs> That's the first. <laughs> um, 
I'm going to uh, take it for you because you're not going to say it. Go ahead, go ahead, take it because I can't what remember it right now. music do you listen to when you're trying to get in the zone? Uh, uh, Jaden Smith. Depends on what kind of zone. Um, if I'm trying to get into like a dark thing, like really like down on myself, I listen to some uh, uh, Jaden songs that get me there. Lupe Fiasco is my number one favorite artist of all time. So uh, oh, he has he has a song Lupe. for every occasion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, he's always on a playlist of mine. Um, it all depends. Like for I have a Drew playlist for my character for this show, and okay. there's some Bryson Tiller on there. There's a, a lot of Tinashe uh-huh. on there because I love her as an artist. Um, there's definitely just Lupe has to be on there just, just because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice Lupe fan. All right. Mm, huge, huge Lupe fan. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Superpower. If you could have one, what would it be? Super speed. Super speed. Nice. Super speed. If I can combine He's it with fire, splash. I would. Fire and super speed. <laughs> That's a dangerous combination. <laughs> like you I hope you're sweet. doing hero things. <laughs> of course, of course, all day. And in fact, the reason why I thought about, I get a lot of thought. Super speed because. You, I can control it, right? So, like, if, for example, um, I can make it the most practical superpower that you can possibly think of, I'd be the best basketball player of all time. I'd break every single record on, in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would, tra- I, would make, I would create the illusion that I'm training up to get this fast. I wouldn't just, like, out of nowhere show up at the Olympics. Right, because you could control I just, like, it. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I like get faster every year and just trying to like, you know, do that. And I, I, would just, I would just beat these records. I would just beat them. So you're like, what? He's just really good and short and like really fast. I guess that's, you know what I mean? Yeah. I thought about that a lot. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. He really had to throw it out. <laughs> yeah, he had to throw it out. I don't, I don't have any more though. I ran out. All right, man. We'll out. leave it there. He, he uh, tapped out. You won. You won. Uh, uh, you won the lightning uh, uh, round. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Um, once again, I want to thank you. Can you um, shout out shout anything? Out, yeah, shout out all everywhere people can find you, uh, uh, your in, Instagram, everything like that, projects, yeah. anything you want to shout out. Go ahead. You can find me on uh, Instagram at Lavelle Adams Gray. Uh, same thing on my Twitter. Um, I'm probably, probably more active on my Twitter than I am on Instagram. Um, uh, shout out to uh, Kiana Madeira for holding me down always for being that the greatest fiance of all time and God willing the greatest wife of all time um, uh, Trinkets 2 comes out probably this summer uh, well we'll see with the, with the quarantine um, <laughs> uh, uh, she's also doing a, a trilogy of films called Fear Street that will be dropping um, uh, shout out to Ghost uh, Power uh, Power mm-hmm. Book 2 Ghost, shout out to Courtney Kemp, shout out to mm-hmm. my sister Toya, shout out to my brother Woody, shout out to my cousin Daniel, um, shout out to Mary, um, let's see, uh, who else? Oh, shout out to my you family. Get to you get to meet Mary? Did you get to meet Mary already? Yeah. And whenever you need to come back or want to come back and just pop in and talk to us and yep. anytime, anytime. Oh man, same here guys. This has been a, a huge pleasure. Thank you guys so much for having me on this thing, man. I, I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you for taking out this time. Well, Lavelle Adams Gray, check him out. You'll see him coming soon on Power. Do they? Sure. I think the date might have been pushed or something because everything yeah. is going on. I don't know when the date is, yeah. but if you're into Power or not, you'll find it. You'll know it. Everybody's into Power. Uh, slasher, <laughs> slasher on Netflix. A uh, coroner. Just check out all this stuff, man. He, he played a young Obama, and he was great. <laughs> Just check him out. <laughs> if you know him already, good for you. If you don't, it's a shame. Check him out. All right? This has been the Wrong Agenda Podcast. Uh, thank you, everybody. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe. Of course, topprioryclothing.com. You can get your merch, your shirts, hats, anything you need. And we'll see you again next time. Appreciate you. Peace out. to you by Valiant World Media Group.